Big guard! Yo, 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 what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Guard. I'm live in my city here at Shafis Arena, tapping in with Mr. Unknown, doing it in his own home. The nation's leader in assists. The magician with the basketball, an elite passer, leads the country in assists per game. Mr. Yuri Collins. And today, he's gonna be stepping in the film room with your boy, Big Guard. We're gonna talk a little bit about the transfer portal situation, the NBA draft process, and what Billiken fans can look forward to next year. And yo, your boy, Big Guard, will give y'all all the questions that everybody want to hear. So y'all better stay tuned. This one's going to be a good one. YC. What's good? Hey, man. What it do? What's up with it? I'm glad you brought your services back to the room. For sure. Room. For sure. See the Cardinals hat, man. You looking good to be back home. Some slight, you know. Hey, man, <laughs> you had the city shook for a week. You went to the transfer portal. Yuri Collins announced He's entering the transfer portal. Tell us how that came about. I mean, uh, after the season I had, I had a pretty good season. Uh, I just wanted to see what was out there for me, um, putting my name out there, um, seeing what I was going to get. Uh, always had the dream of playing at a power five, um, knowing where you can go from there. I mean, I just wanted to see what was up with that. You had a great season, man. You led the nation in assists. So it seemed like you had a lot on the table, man. The speculation from Twitter and the internet was 200,000 to go play for Rick Barnes at Tennessee. Is there any truth to that? I'm just here so I won't be fine. You just here so you won't be fine. No, yeah. I dig it, I dig it. You came back to the crib, came back to the loop, came back to play for Coach Ford. When Travis Ford got the news that Yori was entering the portal, he was driving. He said he almost ran off the road. Now Yori will run the offense for the Billikens next season. Travis got the news today, and he said there was a celebration in the basketball offices. What was it about that whole decision that made you come back home? It was a good feeling. Uh, throughout that whole process, when I entered the transfer portal, uh, I mean, my gut was telling me to stay at home. Uh, knowing what I could get out of five, five school, knowing where I can go, leaving one of them. Um, that was always in the back of my mind, but I just knew something was in me. It was telling me stay home. So, I mean, that played a big part in it. Okay, okay. So, look, going forward, you're still going through the NBA draft process. You're leaving next week. What is it about that process that you're looking to get feedback for? Uh, I mean, playing in the NBA is my dream. Uh, so, just going out there, competing with those guys, seeing what GMs and coaches think about me, uh, that's really what I'm looking to get out of it. But Going into there, I know I'm, I'm maintaining my eligibility, but if I can get drafted, I'm going to, I'm going to go all the way. Okay, so it is a possibility that if the opportunity presents itself, you will not be returning. To for school. sure, for sure. Your goal is to make it to the NBA. Hear, hear from SLU. What you think it's going to take for you to get there? Uh, we got to win first and foremost. Uh, winning, you get anywhere you want to get if you're winning. Uh, a lot of people look at the individual stuff. You can average 20 points and five assists, but if you ain't winning, ain't too many people looking at you. So uh, that's one thing. Coming back here um, next year, we gotta we gotta get to the tournament. We gotta win regular season tournament championship, um, and then go go far in the dance. I ain't just trying to make it there. I'm trying to win some games. So uh, winning, and then of course I gotta I gotta show up. I gotta have better year than I did last year. So all that together, I feel like it's go. It's gonna pay off and I'm gonna get to where I need to go. You know, this is the film room. So you're about to tap into a little bit of your film, show the world your IQ, and just really show them the vision of Yuri College. You ready? For sure, for sure. You locked in. Hey, NBA dreams do come true. You better ask Larry Hughes. They got your post on the wall. <laughs> yeah, it looks hey, so. You had a whole billboard on the highway. I know it was a little tough to to try to leave home. Hey, we here. Got the access code. He said this was a mid-major. This look like real power five-ish right here, man. This look real power five-ish right here. Look sound. This look real power five-ish. Lounge. It's, it's the lounge. Yeah. Come here and chill sometimes. Watch TV. Food. I know they feeding y'all good. Yeah, for sure. Yuri Collins, her got longer and he got a little thicker since St. <laughs> Mary days. 
Right here is where the magic happened. Yeah, this is it right here. We live in the building, man. Look, 11 points per game, 45% from the flow, 36% from three, first team all 18. Broke the school record. We could go <laughs> on and on and on. Led the nation in assists. You know, a lot of kids want to know how you did this. So that's why I had to bring you in the film room. And you know, we're going to talk about it. So growing up, who was your favorite player? It's crazy because my favorite player was D-Wade. But I really, I got older and I saw it wasn't really no resemblance between our games. So then I started looking at people who... Looking, looking at the big guards, you know what I'm saying? Because big guard is the only platform dedicated to small guards. So we coming to bring out a game from one of the best small guards, you know what I'm saying, in the country. But we ain't gonna call him small, we call him a big guard. So look, led the nation in assists, slew all-time assist leader, even got the single game record, man. You dropped 19 dimes, 19 dimes. And we do keep change. So you know I had to bring you 19 dimes, man. You gotta hold on to that. Cause we go, we gonna get to that at the end, but uh, we could go ahead and roll the footage. Go on and roll the footage. Let us, let us show where we started. So you said coming up, you know, you was D-Way, he was a mid-range guy, and, and CP. So I call these YC3 moments, you know what I'm saying? See you and your Chris Paul bag, getting in the mid-range, getting straight down the middle. Um, my favorite player, Allen Iverson, took this shot over and over again, and you can see the resemblance. Same for the same stop, getting separation. Just tell us why the mid-range is so essential for any small guard to have. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy, because I didn't really get this into my, my bag until this year. Um, my freshman and sophomore year, I mean, I wasn't shooting the ball this good, but um, them just, you got to pick your spots. Uh, that's where you go get at most of the time. Being little, you really can't get to the rim most of the time. Uh, and then the three-pointer, I mean, it is what it is, but being a little guard like us, you got to get to your spots in that mid-range and Make get it work. your money from there. Yeah. Okay, so... What I like most about your mid-range jumpers and, you know, CP3 even got the same thing going for him, uh, is the screens. We could go on the road at here. Your guys know that, not saying you're not a real strong three-point shooter, but you're signaling the guys off and they setting the screen below the three-point line. Is that something you guys game plan to do or is something your big just kind of gel to do due to your game? No, that's something my um, coaches, we emphasize all the time, set the screens low. You set them low, uh, they really can't go under those because you just giving me the mid range shot at that point. So I'm um, setting them low, and I mean, at this point, you got to pick your poison. Uh, yeah, you get right yeah, to your spot. Straight to it. And make it happen, man, Mr. YC. That's what I love. And you can even see CP3. So I call you YC3. Maybe got to be YC1. You know what I'm saying? Getting right to his spot, elbow jumper. You know, this is a staple. He doing that night in, night out in the playoffs. We got to pull up midi. You shot. 46% of the time when you shot the ball, they was uh, jump shots. You know, the stigma around your game, as you know, is, well, he can't shoot. That's how a lot of people feel. But if you could knock down a mid-range jump shot, you could knock down a three as well. Why do you think you struggle when you come further out to the three-point line compared to when you're inside the lines? Uh, sometimes it's just confidence, uh, fatigue sometimes. But, I mean... I don't really like to put excuses on my game. So that's just something I got to work on. Okay. So we started off with the strength. So a weakness that I spotted and even according to Synergy, they spotted that the spot up game. You know, you usually the playmaker on your team. So other guys ain't always making plays for you. You are yeah, yeah. really making plays for them, but you do get your opportunities. So we're going to show a little bit. We can roll the spot up footage. We're going to show a little bit of the, uh, the spot up action. So where we starting at is your best game. Pause one time. This is your best game this year. Scoring wise, not your most complete, scoring wise. 35 points, probably tallied in the most minutes you probably ever played at 47. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want you to watch yourself through the course of this game. We're gonna start off the first clip with the makes. And we gonna, we gonna allow the footage to roll. Right there, money's early. That's the first shot of the game. Getting it here, giving it up. It's great ball moving, by the way. The team playing within his concepts. You knocking it down. So now, I mean, the same flow, same shots, but now you're fur further out. Um, talk to your trainer. Shout out Corey Frazier. 
he spoke a little bit about not only the mechanics, but how you don't get much lift on your shot. So you're going to the check out the, the pre-draft and, and shooting from the NBA line right now. We about in NBA territory. Um, do you feel like it's, it's a leg thing and you just really shooting it with power when you get further out that way or is it more mechanics for you? Um, so for me, it was me not always being a good shooter. It was never like, all right, let me start off shooting out here and okay. shoot the NBA three. I'm trying to get the college three down first. Right. So I need to bang that before I get this, this NBA three down. So, I mean, now that I'm going through this process and stuff, uh, I'm shooting that with ease now. Okay. Right, yeah. So we we getting better. Yeah, we, we, we got there. Yeah, we good. Okay, it is, it's just the course of the game. You had a, a lot of buckets this game. Here getting the rebound, you know, pushing the break. You also finding your teammates, but here just getting your back, getting right back to what we love, the midi. But you ain't taking it. But shout out to my man, just boxing this guy out, getting you all the way to the rim. How important is a big just holding it down around the paint, blocking this man out so he could not get his hand on the ball? I mean, that's just little stuff. Um, sometimes your big don't even know. Like, he probably didn't even realize he was sealing that man for me. But um, just his presence down there, stuff like that. He want the ball right there. Right. But just little stuff like that. Um, it opened up stuff for me all the time. Hey, Biggs, I got to take note, man. My man really holding it down. And here, this is just typical YC getting to his spots. The mid-range game, like we talked about. A little bit of your CP3 bag. And up six here, second half. Uh, they face guarding. What you think the key is here for you to get the ball? Uh, we got a little play for me right here. Um, get me in the screen, straight to a ball screen. Um, I like when you face somebody face guarding me because I, I I know how to draw a foul. Uh, you're going to have to reach or something. I'm going to get the ball for sure. You're not going to keep the ball out of my hand for too long. So you gonna, if you want, don't want me with it, you're going to foul me. So what's the advice you got for guards who's getting face guard, denied the ball? What are some key things they need to do in order to free themselves up? Short and sweet, if you want the ball, you go go get it. Like, okay. That's just how I look at it. Um, a lot of people step over, do this, do that. If you want it, you go get you it. You go, so, go get it. However, you gonna get the ball. So it's your will. Um, after talking to Fraze, he told me about just, you know, a lot of guys being able to train and they train usually shooting uh, off the dribble. Do you find yourself training more shooting off the dribble than catch and shoot when you're yeah, in the gym? For sure. Uh, I'm a point guard. like. Like you said before, most of my shots, they're going to come from me. Uh, I'm the guys, that, I'm the dude out there making plays for others. I don't expect my teammates really making plays for me. Because uh, when it's go time, I'm going to go get mine. So, I mean, that's what it was right here. Yeah, so off the bounce, you definitely a way better shooter. You know what I'm saying? You elevate on your mid-range on your shot before early in this game. It was real set, you know what I'm saying? Didn't really get much lift. That makes a lot of a difference, but that's a tougher shot to shoot through the course of the game. Because of course, during these times of double OTs and OT, your legs would be tired. At that moment, I think that's the jump shot needed, especially at the NBA level, don't you think? Just pure form, nice elevation. Hey man, you shooting that thing like you 6'6". And right there in crunch time, you can let it roll. That was just money. Hey, that was a hell of a game. Explain the game winning feeling. Explain the game winning feeling. A lot of people don't get the experience that in a lifetime. I know Sean probably never really got the experience a game winner. You know, I, I had a few of them in my lifetime, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, just explain those emotions. Cause for me, you know, I, I want to yell at the top of my lungs. I want to tell him King Kong ain't got nothing on me. You know, I want to run around the gym. H how did you feel? Y'all on a roll? Game though. Yeah, I mean, I had a chance before, so I knew this one. I, I gotta go do something, but I mean, it's double overtime. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, so that one went in. And I'm walking to the team. I just told him, let's go home. Like, let's go pack it up. The love after a game winner is, is amazing. Not even just from your team, from everybody. Yeah, for Knowing sure. that you hit the game winner, yeah, yeah. that type of love is something you can't truly explain. And that's only a feeling you could get if, like, you really tuned in and, yeah, yeah. and locked into the game. So that was dope. So we we talked a little bit about that game. So another weakness that I found just due to the charts and, you know, synergy was you in transition. Um, have you talked to somebody about your transitional play? Nah, not for real. Okay. So a lot of times the transition, not even that you always sped up, but it seemed like you always trying to get out ahead of the pack. 
but even from the conversation you know I had with Frazier earlier, it's, it's your angles. Bringing it up the right side, you know, you, you kind of really not giving yourself any driving angles uh, for the defense. It was some plays that I found that you actually converted off attacking from the wing. Um, but when you attacking from the wing, what is it you really trying to see or you really just trying to see if somebody's going to stop you? These are assists. So okay. the way our system ran, I'm pushing up the wing. Uh, we straight into ball screen. So okay. right here, I'm pretty sure he either finna be Oh, okay, so oh, no. you, yeah. you, you went into him. Yeah, you went into him. Charged. I see something like that though. Yeah, if it's a one on one situation, and then still, we coming back up the wing. We come back up the wing. It's, it, it's pretty hard to kind of get that extra step on a guy. And then, other outside of just the angle, you know, you want to stay center third with the uh transition, it's just kind of not really having numbers. Yeah, and you know, y'all up five, five minutes to go. Maybe you could pull it out. Um, but definitely at the next level, NBA level, these, these have to be converted. You know, you getting back there. Don't really got the numbers, but I get it. But I think this is more of your style is what we about to show. Because these are more faster athletic teams. This, you know, these are the most, the black teams. So the speed and athleticism is there. So it's just the IQ got to kick in a little smarter. So like even here, you're beating a guy to slow down, patience, shoot the midi. I love that. That look good. That's that's like that's a good looking miss. And even against Memphis, uh, you did the same thing, which was another game. You was a little sped, but you slowed down a bit. Was able to observe the floor, hide behind the man, pull up for the midi. You know, didn't make it, but you know these are shots that's in motion that you look you know pretty good taking. And even here against Boston College, which was uh, the 19 dimes game, just slowing down, stopping on the dime behind the line. So I gave you the 19 dimes because. I mean, I couldn't show the Boston College clip without getting into what I wanted to get to. You had 19 assists in the game. That's a lot of assists. You got to give a lot of credit to your teammates. But how much credit do you get to Travis for system in uh, allowing you to get guys open, and not only get guys open, but for their system to get guys open? Yeah, I mean, he, he trusts me with the ball, put the ball in my hand to make plays. So um, a lot of credit to him and my teammates for knocking down those shots. Okay. We're going to get into the 19 dimes. We're not going to show all 19 because the, the, the time, we're on the limit. So you, you got Jimerson, pause it, coming off. What are, what are you looking at? Whose man are you looking at in order to be able to make the correct read? So my first option is Gibbs. So I'm looking at him and his man. Right now, his man is trailing him behind him. So if 12 on Boston College don't show, I got to bounce past Gibbs, got to lay up or a little midi pool right there. Okay. Right here, the man is trailing. So, the dude from Boston College, he do the he do the right principle. He's supposed to show right there, but you show you leaving my man wide open. I'm throwing it right over the top. He's throwing it right all over the top, and he's just making a a, a good finish. And, yeah. and he's an undersized big. You feel? Yeah. In his league, he's yeah. undersized. And then here, straight out the inbound, going into some ball screen action. Tell me about this read. I think all my big guards. One thing when I go see younger players play. I always want them to be able to understand what I mean about reading the floor. You know, and a lot of guys got to learn this early in order to play at your level. I wasn't a guy that was able to really learn how to read the floor yeah. until I got to college. So yeah. that's what stunted my growth. But you being able to do this at this age is a lot because these, these pro reads, explain this read to us. So right here, uh, it's a ball screen, big rolling down, I'm coming right. You have to tag because you got a big rolling straight to the middle of the rim. If you right. don't tag, I got a sh straight pass to him for an easy layup. So they tag. Jay Nez lift a little bit. Found him for the three. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's simple to you, but the youngins, they watching. So we got to be able to teach them, especially when they watching it right here. You're a great rebounder guard. Getting a rebound, pushing the break, finding your shooters. How important it is to make sure Jim Jimerson getting his shots just when you on the floor to keep him in the floor of the game. Yeah, somebody like Gibb, uh, you gotta, you gotta find him. He shoot too good not to find him. So, I'm mean, at all times I'm looking for him. Uh, Cause I mean, he can miss five in a row, but he can make 15 make in a row, so. For sure, like it's gonna be an amazing show, you know, just going into next year, especially yeah. with what y'all got coming back. Uh, so, the, so the main thing, going to the next level is not only the shot, but you know, it's just you as a defender. I believe you could defend, especially at a high level. You played in the EYBL. Um, you hold a lot of these guards 
accountable, although you play 37 minutes, so it'd be tough, you know, just being able to play offense and yeah. defense. I get that certain players you're going to take off, but you got real nice hands, average two steals. Uh, you ninth in school history in steals right now, right? Yeah, you don't know the stats, but, you know, big guard, big guard looked you up. So here, man, uh, just, you know, really staying active, you know, showing your quick hands, getting through the screen, you know, pause it right there. That was the ice. Yeah. Yeah, I was meant to icing it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, you know, just you and your teammates being in sync, it, it'd be pretty hard to judge a guy on defense not knowing their team yeah. defensive schemes. Yeah. But I seen there that y'all was icing it, so you seem pretty solid. So as you icing it, hands go on the ball. All my big guards, all my big guards. My man, Yuri Collins, <laughs> is the nation leader in assists, can dive on the floor, so can you. You can dive on the floor. I'm trying to tell you, this is where you're going to make your money at. You get to the summer league, you get the opportunity next next year when you're going to have everybody looking at you. Uh, this is pretty much when pro scouts come. This is where you got to be at an all-time high. This is my man, Wendell. Yo, Icy. Yo, my <laughs> dog, while C was on you, I told you if you come to the Lou, you got to check in nah, with Nah, this was a whole different ball game, though, because he was, he was on me, too. But okay. uh, it was one play. He, uh, he did something, and I feel like he found me. So I went to the ref. I'm like, like, what's up? Like, he like, just like play ball, like. This, this SEC, this like, Power yeah, Five. Like, okay. this, this is what I was looking yeah, for. You, you know, know if you would have went to Tennessee, that that would have been a meeting. Yeah, because yeah, you know, in the ATN, they everything kind of ticky tacky. Sure. But they was letting us play ball right here. So when the ref told me like play ball, like I'm like, cool. Let's like let's. let's I'm from, I'm from the low. Yeah. We, we from the low. We don't we ain't on none of that Detroit stuff. So you handled my man Icy Wing. Shout out to Icy Wing. We could roll it. You hounding them, but this is where you make your bread and butter. Just moving your feet, showing that you could be a pest. You know, the small guys on the floor got a guard like that. And you get in there, have him throw it up, you know, turnover, uh, getting it up the floor, and even here, still on him. And this was one of those plays in this game that I felt like I definitely should have won. I couldn't stop they pick and roll. But you was giving him a run for his bunny, for sure. I think you was probably one of his toughest defenders uh, this season. Do you feel like he was one of the toughest guards you had to guard? Yeah, for sure. Uh, he got a lot in his bag. And then with the system they got, I mean, they coach let them hoop. So it's like, yeah, you don't know what's coming. Yeah, BP just yeah, let them play. He, let him, yeah, he yeah. got a rule. You either shoot in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock or, or in the last 10 seconds. Yeah, see, he, so, they was rocking. So Yeah, so with that, you got to pick your point. You're going to get them early or you're going to get them late. So, you know, right here, uh, you just staying active. You just staying active, guarding them. Hounding them, making it hard on them, man. That's that's a guy who move at his own pace. You right here, you gonna get your hand in the cookie jar. They was letting you play, and you was bringing it, coming up, getting a steal, and you know them the defensive play that you just gotta make. You know at that next level to definitely, you know, get your foot in the door, man. So, so we gotta get deep in the uh, Yuri Collins bag, which is one of your signatures, man. Is your floater? Uh, you got some amazing touch. What is one thing? Uh, you focusing on as far as technique when you're going up to shoot a runner? Um, just getting it up high, soft touch. Um, I mean, a lot of people, they really try to like think about it. But you get it up high. I was told, you soft know. Soft touch. Elbow to eyebrow. You know, yeah, that, that's Drew Hanley. Yeah, you know, he he break down the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was just something you've been naturally doing it yes. your entire life. It was just like So really, I get it. Yeah, you really playing against sure. Auburn here. It's something that you definitely got to need. You can never get too deep. All my big guards, you got to take notes on a floater. You can never get too deep, man. Tell them why a floater is essential to any small guard game. I mean, you shoot going down there. Look at you, six nine, six ten, seven foot. You you ain't really competing with them at the rim, so you get it up early and over. Them. So the go mid, get it. You got the midi. And then when you when you can't really stop on a dime, you got the float. So this is a float I always love to tell all my big guards they got to have in their bag. And it's, this is just that two-foot float. This is that off two feet. What do you feel like the difference between a two-footer and a runner when you're taking that floater? I personally like the two-foot better because you're kind of catching them off guard. You're yeah. still probing. And then it's like, hey, like now I'm going over with it. So, and then off two, you still got options. I can make a pass. I can anything with it so uh i like the two foot better for sure yeah you could definitely keep uh keep it alive with yeah, the two foot yeah. and right there nice two foot floater two feet for safety that's what i always say on all my commentaries and here getting back into that lane 
This is, this is beautiful right here. Cause you're gonna stop on both feet. My guards gotta know this. They have to know this. And I'm gonna ask you if you know this. What's the difference when you landing on landing on two at the same time as far as you landing on one before the other? You know that? No, I don't know that. What's, what's, what's the difference? Okay, so when you land on both feet, like mm -hmm. the jump stop you made, it's a clean jump stop. Usually, you know, you jump stop, you might go right, left, yeah. left, right. So the foot that hit the ground first is the established pivot foot. Okay. So when you land on two, like you said before, you got options. Yeah. You pick your pivot foot. So we roll it, Yuri Collins, landing at the same time, two foot floater, man. That's a key. So all my big guards, I gotta take note. You gotta have a floater in your game. And Yuri Collins, man, on, you know, 35 possessions, man, scoring 31 points on them. So you almost, every time you take a float, it's, it's a guaranteed bucket. <laughs> For sure. That's what it's feeling like. So, hey, we wrapped up here at the film room. Episode two, unknown, doing it in his own home. Had to break down a little bit of footage of him so y'all can get details in this game and show what you need to put in your bag. Nation leader in assists, man. He's going to be a slew legend. And, yo, we going to get to the tournament next year? Ain't no doubt. Oh, ain't no doubt? No doubt. The friendly wager? I know no you got doubt. the NIL money. No what doubt. you got for me? You trying to put something on the line? We can talk about that later. All right, you got, you got my 19 down, <laughs> so just keep that on the wager. Hey, y'all better stay tuned, man. We doing it for the city. St. Louis, stand up. For sure.